What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for joining. Hope you are having a great one, as always. And today we are taking a look at Star Wars Boba Fett Arena War. Uh, I have no idea why they went with the AS on that. Um, it's the Arena War version, the black one, um, which I am very, very psyched for. There you have a little barcode of Mabobber if you want it. Um, we will go ahead and crack right into this guy, get him out of Carbonite, and take a look-see. Uh, now, if you aren't familiar with this figure... Uh, it was a l relatively limited edition one. Um, honestly, full disclosure, and I, I know people are going to get mad at me, uh, I'm not a huge Boba Fett fan. Uh, but, this figure looks super cool. And I kind of got hit with that dreaded FOMO, as they call it, where it was like, eh, if I don't get it and I end up wanting him, I'm going to have to spend a whole lot of money. So I managed to snag a pre-order when it was available. I'm not terribly disappointed. Um, and it's not that I hate the character, I just... It doesn't really do a lot for me. Um, honestly, this, this is probably going to make some people real angry, but I think the main reason that he's popular is because of the movie E.T., which you're probably like, what the heck are you talking about? Um, but if you're not familiar, uh, when they made E.T., um, there's kind of a funny story with M&M's where they offered M&M's to be in it, and they were like, nope. Um, so they went with Reese's Pieces, and Reese's Pieces kind of became super famous and blew up. Um, so Boba Fett is the Star Wars action figure that Elliot plays with in the movie and mentions by name. And I genuinely think that that probably made the character a lot more popular than getting knocked into a Sarlacc pit. Um, don't get me wrong, the toy as a kid was super cool. Um, I know the early one you actually had to mail away for. Ooh, that looks fancy. Um, yeah, the first three and three quarter inch one was like a mail away figure where you bought a whole bunch, uh, you sent in the proof of purchase, and then they sent you the cool little toy. Um, which, kind of fun note on that, uh, they were initially supposed to have a firing rocket, but when they tested the prototype, it was not particularly safe. Uh, so everybody that had ordered one with the barcodes was expecting a firing rocket. They did not get one. And uh, Now you probably, if you are a Boba Fett nerd you, or a toy ner nerd, you've probably heard that uh, the firing rocket ones are available. Some of the prototypes are out there. Oh man, this guy looks super cool. Uh, so you can get the prototype version if you want to spend like twenty or thirty thousand dollars, something absurd like that. Um, it is, it does exist. Uh, certainly not my cup of tea, um, but I digress. We're just going to go ahead and kind of pull out everything. I'm not going to pull out the... Uh, he does actually have a dynamic stand in here, which is nice. Um, one thing I, I do want to get a quick glance at. I'm not overly impressed with the inside of the box. Normally it's black, has a little more padding to it. This is just kind of stuff thrown into plastic, so that's a little bit depressing. Um, now, honestly, this figure currently... Um, if you wanted to track one down, you'd basically have to go the resale market. And I want to say, the last time I looked, you would be getting them at around 400 bucks. I don't know if it would be worth that. Um, I do think it's only going to go up in price over the years. So if it is one you're eyeballing, you might want to consider getting it now rather than later. Um, but all things considered, I'm not entirely confident um, that I would necessarily want to spend that much on it. Getting them at retail was great. I don't mind that at all, but extra hundred bucks, I could do without that. Um, now he does have some tiny little blades as well. We'll try and pull those out. Uh, he's got this super cool spear, which is awesome looking. Um, the blades we might not get too close of a look at. They're just in there with the hands, so I'm probably just going to do a quick glance at these once we get them out. So here's the extra hand pack. We're just going to pop that there. And like I said, you do get some little uh, extra blades and stuff, um, which is kind of cool. Fun little accessories. I'll take a look in the actual uh, instruction book on those and figure out exactly where they go. Because um, with my 
who knows, they're probably part of his backpack and I'm just stupid. Um, but we'll take a gander at all of that in a little bit. Uh, right now, let's get to the figure and mm, he is gorgeous. Uh, the first thing that I do want to point out is that little dent in the helmet. Um, I thought it looked really stupid in the photos that I saw, but I was willing to gamble on it anyway. Um, it does look really stupid in person, um, but it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Uh, it's definitely a noticeable blemish, but in the grand scheme of things, not too big of a deal. Uh, the targeting system moves, which is nice. Um, that does feel incredibly fragile, though, uh, which, you know, it is a very tiny thin piece of plastic, so I'm not surprised there. Um, I'll just have to be careful with it, because yeah, if you... you you see me, I drop stuff. Um, this is taped on pretty secure, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that carefully when I have the chance because I don't want to rip off the beautiful Wookiee fur. Um, this is Wookiee fur in his normal outfit. I'm not sure if that's what it's supposed to be here since it's black. Maybe it's that uh, that black chrysanthemum guy. Who knows? That'd be kind of fun. Uh, probably not. I don't think that's the case, but we'll just go ahead and pretend that. Uh, that's taped on a little too tight for a yank. And these guys might be as well. Yeah, it looks like it. All right, we're going to cut these off. I'll be right back. All right, back in action. And we can take a better look at this fella up close and personal now. Um, so there's a couple concerns that I have just off the get-go. And these are all things that are really only going to impact uh, big, klutzy people like me. Um, he has a lot of tiny, tiny little thin pieces of plastic on here. Um... I know that I drop stuff a lot, so I'm kind of worried that some of this stuff might eventually uh, not stay attached to him. Um, that's just sort of a, a me personal concern. I don't think it'll impact everybody. Um, one other thing that I noticed, um, I didn't really realize it had this weird sort of stripe design on the cape, um, so that's kind of a fun little bonus there. This is wired also, which is cool. You can pose it a little bit better. Um, but I thought it was cool that it had the design. I do really like the way that they frayed it also. Like, it genuinely looks like it went through combat, which it should. Um, so that's pretty darn cool in that regard. I thought that was impressive. Um, the back of his armor, uh, honestly, no dings or anything, which is fine because it's covered up. Um, but they did a really good job of making it look like he's seen some some stuff. Uh, he's got a whole bunch of just little pits and scuff marks and stuff on the armor itself, which is really, really cool. Uh, definitely digging the design they did with it there. Um, but there are, again, you know, just some, some tiny things like the uh, you know, little crotch cover is a bit off-center there, so I'm going to have to kind of play with this to get it lined up right, um, which hopefully will be doable. Um, and just kind of little things like that that are going to take a, a tiny bit of adjustment to really get exactly the way I want them. Not the end of the world, but just something I wanted to point out. Um, I do like that he's got that cool little blaster holster down there. Um, he does have knee rockets, which is fun, so you can have him shoot those off. Uh, definitely a cool piece overall. I do also think this cape kind of... little... It's, it's barely attached. Um, you can probably take it off pretty easy. I'm not going to yank it, but uh, I don't know. Not a huge fan of it. I guess it adds a little bit to them, but nothing too amazingly impressive. Uh, now, he does have magnetic backpack, which I suppose you would probably would want to, in theory, take the cape off before you were actually using it. I'm just plopping it on there for the sake of ease. Logically, if you're using a, a backpack and you, or a jetpack and you have a cape, and this is going to light on fire. And then you got a whole bunch of other problems. So there's got to be an easy way to get this off. I just really don't want to yank it. I'm guessing you just kind of unclip it from this little pin here. Um, but I'll take a look in the instructions and do that on my own time. Uh, I definitely would not recommend just yanking it if you happen to get one yourself. Um, but probably going to want to remove it if you're using the, the jetpack. Or not. You know, who cares? Maybe you just want it as a, a rocket firer and you're not going to actually you know, take advantage of that flight action. Um, I did want to point out one other thing. He has the cool little uh, spikes in his feet, which I thought were awesome, so he can do some nice kick damage there. Um, honestly, really cool design with most of the stuff on here. Uh, double jointed in the knees, so no restrictions in that regard. A little bit of standard like restriction there. Um, it does feel like he's got a fat suit on underneath it. Uh, 
at least, to, yeah, he definitely does. Um, so if you wanted to customize this a bit and get some more movement out of him, you might want to take off the clothing. Um, weirdly enough, it doesn't feel like he's got one on his arms, but there's definitely some extra padding down there in the legs and certainly up in the body as well. Um, so that might get you some more flexibility and mobility out of him uh, if you just open him up and take that off. I'm not going to on account of this being kind of a relatively limited figure and I don't really want to mess it up. I don't think I'll ever sell it, but if I did, I'd, I'd rather have him, you know, fully intact for, for that purpose. Uh, he does, for the most part, seem like he'll stand okay. Uh, he's weighted a bit weird because of the backpack at the moment. And then this leg is slightly twisted out. There we go. Uh, but he should, for the most part, stand up just fine. Ta-da! No real harm there. This blaster looks awesome. Um, and just want to get some kind of close-ups with the detailing they did on the stock. Because it is sweet. I definitely love that. You could actually... There might be a wire somewhere floating around in there, just so you can attach that and give them a little bandolier. I'm probably wrong. We'll take a look at some point, but... I mean, I feel like you could definitely strap that on so you can at least sling it over his shoulder. But I'm really, really digging what they did with this, even kind of silvering the, the handle. Just a very, very cool gun. Love it. It's outstanding work on that. Uh, it is plastic, but it does genuinely look metallic. They did a really good job with the paint on this one. Um, same with the weapons, and even his armor. I was kind of surprised that it wasn't die-cast, just the way it looked, but uh, nope, all plastic. Um, and then his little hand pistols, these are both the same, uh, but you can dual wield like a boss. Um, they definitely do look pretty darn snazzy. I'm impressed with them. Nice black and silver, kind of a basic uh, gunmetal gray on them, but it does the job. Um, and then one of the really cool ones that he's got is this thing, which I'm assuming and hoping he uses the spear in the comics because it is awesome looking. Um, I haven't actually read them yet. Uh, you can pick random reason, mainly laziness. Um, but this thing just looks super cool. I do wish, honestly, that they would have gone die cast with it um, just to give it a little more pizzazz, but... Holy cow, that thing's cool. Definitely a neat one. Weathered the blade really well. Uh, honestly, they just did a, a knockout job with this. And then it does actually have a nice little spike on down here as well, so you can kind of do the, the double whammy. This reminds me of the end of a gaffy stick, which is kind of fun. Um, especially you know, later on with the Boba Fett show, so it's kind of a... I'm not a, sure if it was intentional, but I'm, I'm going to pretend it was, and I like what they did there. Uh, but definitely a cool-looking accessory in that regard. Um, and then the actual stand, uh, this is one of the better bases that I've seen them do, which is weird, but um, you just got the nice Star Wars Boba Fett. Probably could have just done the straight Star Wars logo there, but I, I really like what they did with this. Um, it's big and clunky, which is cool. Uh, it's definitely going to stand out compared to the normal ones that you get. Um, and just the detailing they did on this is really neat. It looks like it should be way more textured than it is. Um, like It's honestly flat for the most part. I know it looks like you would think it would be all sort of bumpy and textured, but nope. This is really, really good, good work on it. So, big fan of that. Nice job in that regard. Um, and that's pretty much all you get with this guy.